All right, so part two of this series, we're going to have another small battle. Um, this time it's against Valandia. I kind of wandered into their territory here. Most of my troops were able to heal up after that first battle. Uh, but the other thing I did is I dropped a bunch of guys off. I've got now about 14 companions and uh, considerably less troops. We, we, uh, we dropped off some elite troops at a garrison, and now we're ready for, for another demonstration of battle um, and tactics on a, a smaller scale. Um, so you see, I've also, instead of in upgrading these uh, these characters, these troops, I've intentionally left them as is, uh, this lower level one and two tier kind of stuff. Uh, I still have some higher troops, higher level troops in here, but I wanted to, to sort of simulate uh, a lot of the things you you face in, in the early mid game uh, of Bannerlord, where, you know, of course you don't have a, 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 an army packed with elite troops. Uh, you know, we still have high level companions, uh, there's no way for me to sort of like de-level my companions here, uh, but nevertheless, uh, hopefully this is a pretty accurate demonstration uh, of tactics that a lot of people will face in sort of the mid, the mid to early game. Uh, this will be interesting if it's raining. We're attacking Valandia here. Can't quite tell. This guy didn't want to fight for some reason. They're slightly favored according to that, uh, you know, that top bar. For some reason, he was disinterested in fighting me. I don't know if that's because he had a, a hot date or something else, something else going on. Uh, but any case, in any way, here we go. We're ready for battle with this guy. Uh, knowing your enemy is a big part of, of fighting in Banner Lord. Ah, oh, this is epic. We got some lightning and rain. Um, that'll make for an interesting battle. Uh, knowing your enemy is a big part of Banner Lord. You must be aware of your enemy's strength and weaknesses if you're going to succeed. In this case, of course, I know that Valandia obviously has uh, excessive, sometimes uh, an enormous amount of cavalry, and those cavalry units can be very powerful, right? Um, so that's that's something you need to try to think into your strategy. Uh, hopefully, the thunder's not too loud. In fact, here we go. Let's let's do some adjusting here. But the thunder is going to be making it hard for you guys to hear me. Uh, so it's important to understand your enemy army composition, what you're going to be facing, the difficulties of that um, before you get into battle, right? Now, of course, when you're just starting to play, you're not going to have any idea. Uh, but to be perfectly honest, th this channel is not really, not really designed for, for a brand new player to be watching and trying to learn stuff. Um, at least, you know, have a month or two of gameplay probably under your belt before, before you're trying to learn some of these tactics. So I have no idea where the enemy is. I don't know if that's because of the fog of war, the lightning, or whatever whatever else is going on here. But because I know they have cavalry, I'm using every single landscape advantage I can. And on this map here, there's kind of these, these little marshes here. They're not real big, but if I can sort of put these between the enemy and I, uh, I think that'll improve my chances of winning. Uh, Vlandia typically charges pretty hard out the gates. They have this, uh, you know, that strong cavalry I already mentioned. And so we're gonna try to slow them down with these small little little pools here. Whoa. Follow me. So the enemy there, the enemy generally moves in a straight direction, so I'm literally putting the enemy right on the other side of these pools. And not the enemy so much to speak as my, my troops. Now I'm spreading my archers out here in nice lines. I'm actually going to put my infantry like right next to the pool. I don't want them in the pool, but nearby. The 6th, which is my skirmishers, I'm positioning over there on the left. And then the 8th Corps, you've seen me do this before, uh, again on that side flank. The cavalry, because I want one more barrier here. I want one more thing to sort of slow down the enemy. Any spots where it looks like they'll be able to run clearly through and attack my troops, I want my cavalry. They're just in a shield wall, right? All I'm doing with them here is just sort of creating a wall of steel that the enemy has to go through in order to get to us. Now we're outnumbered significantly here, so if we're going to win this, we're going to have to enact good good, good tactics. Uh, so I got my archers back a little bit too far. My, my infantry I want in a shield wall, right, because there will be incoming volleys of, of crossbowmen. They're playing really defensively. 260. You can tell by the number. There's two different numbers. When you hold down the alt or your equivalent in whatever whatever uh, console you're playing with, you can tell whether or not the enemy's moving, advancing, or not. In this case, it's really curious. They're just kind of sitting there. So I'm going to go explore, investigate a little bit, and see exactly what kind of battle we're going to have. It's possible I might need to actually attack these fucks, even though these cowards outnumber me, you know, two and a half to one. Yeah, they're like in a defensive ring there. Maybe they're hiding under that tree so they don't get wet. I don't know. 
Let's see here. I mean, it will give us a different uh, opportunity tactically to pour in. Oh, I forgot I was not supposed to kill everybody. Uh, it will give us another opportunity to try different tactical things here. If they're just going to sit static, uh, that's that's something, of course, you're going to face. And, of course, you can use tactics to deal with that. Now, their cavalry seems like they might be attacking. I like want to bitch slap these guys in the back of the head and be like, come fight, you pussies. Uh, but it seems like it seems like today, despite outnumbering us two to one, they're just going to sit back and wait for the action to come to them. Maybe they're hoping we'll get wet and just give up. These guys are marching in like fucking one mile an hour. This is about as poor a strategy as you could possibly enact. Um, I don't know. They're just sort of like exploring with their cavalry. And Napoleon had a famous quote. Napoleon has lots of quotes. If you don't know much about Napoleon, don't go see Ridley Scott's movie. That's a sad example uh, of what Napoleon's life was all about. Find a really good book or a really good uh, history channel like Epic History TV to learn more about the guy. Uh, an amazing guy, full of quotes. One of his famous quotes, though, is when the enemy's making mistakes, don't interrupt them, right? If the enemy wants to send in 20 cavalry here to get shot off their horses, uh, we will let them. All right, so they do seem like they're just going to sit back, a bunch of fucking lazy bitches, cowards. So they're going to make us attack. We're going to look for every tactical advantage that we can to attack these fucks. And that hill over there is what I'm seeing as my tactical advantage. Anytime you can gain elevation on the enemy, anytime you can be shooting down at them, especially if they're in a valley, they're, they're kind of on a knoll over there, but especially if they're down in a valley, take advantage of those opportunities. Now the enemy is going to be shooting as we approach here. So again, thinking tactically, thinking uh, strategically, intelligently, we're not just going to approach headlong over this hill. What I'm actually going to do is bring my troops down into this little dell. You can see down here there's a little bit of a dell. I'm physically assigning them to come down there. And then I'm sending cavalry out strictly as distractionary waves. I want the enemy crossbowmen shooting at my cavalry. Instead of my uh, instead of my allied troops that are coming in sort of behind me here, I don't want those guys being shot the whole time they're traversing across this valley. So I'm sending those cavalry just to sort of distract the enemy. Right? Look at how many rounds they're, they're shooting at them. It's like almost machine gun fire. I'm actually going to fly in here and sort of be a distractionary force too. Uh, you know, this is part of tactics: is distracting the enemy. Anytime you can sort of offset the enemy's uh, attack, confuse them, do so. Right? They're sending cavalry against my troops, but the mission is accomplished. Almost all of my troops now are in that safe little dell, and we prepare for our attack. Now, our attack in this situation, again, is mostly going to be utilizing the range. I don't have a lot of archers compared to them. They must outnumber us like four or five to one from the archer perspective. So this is not maybe a battle that we're going to win, but we're still going to try. Even if we lose, we'll be able to demonstrate some tactics for you. Now you see the safety of this dell, right? The enemy either has to come down in here and join us or just do what they're doing, waste ammo over the top, right? It's of no value. And I can tell from the numbers, it's a little bit of cheating. I kind of wish that you had to have like really good scouting or some other skill to see this. Uh, I could literally just sit here and with my x-ray vision tell you exactly what the enemy's doing, right? The, the cavalry on their left wing is reforming and the rest of them are sitting there like fucking pussies waiting for the real action to happen. Uh, it's a little bit overpowered, but it is what it is. Alright, now, if we just pop our head up over this hill with our archers, we will get obliterated with arrows, right? As soon as I do that, you see 10,000 arrows coming down, right? So how do we do this, right? I want my troops right there on that ridge, but I don't want them just being shot to pieces before they even have a chance to join this battle, right? We're going to do two things. We're going to protect them with a row of shield wall. Oh, watching these cavalry see if they get frisky. They are getting frisky. We're going to protect them with a row of shield wall. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to distract again with our cavalry. Right? We're going to basically, look at these guys, these dipshits just charging in. Not real smart. Here. Thanks, fellas. I, I appreciate stupid people uh, in life. Stupid people's not their fault. Like, they're just born to... i, I got to get rid of some, some javelins if you're wondering what the fuck I'm doing. Um, if I pick up this sheet... Wow, actually, you know what? doesn't matter. Out of my way. Uh... It'll drop your primary weapon. See, it just dumped my axe right there, but it doesn't matter because I'm not going to be using my axe in this battle. All right, so when the enemy's making mistakes, Napoleon had that famous quote, don't interrupt them. 
we're not going to make the same mistake. We're not going to come up here and just get obliterated by 10,000 arrows, right? As soon as I come up there every single time, 10,000 darts. If your guys are standing there, they're pulverized, right? Now, we're still going to get shot at. We're still going to get hurt when we come up here. But there's two things we can do to mitigate that. First, we can spread these guys out. You don't need to send them all in the same spot, right? Because then they're taking that concentrated archer fire. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to try to distract by sending cavalry out on both wings here, right? Like I'm going to do it right now. Sending them in different directions. Oops, that's not quite far enough. There, so they're being sent way off into the, the forest, way out there. The cavalry will start running. Now with this infantry line, I'm going to bring them up in shield wall to also distract from the enemy, right? I want the enemy shooting at our cavalry and our shield wall, not our archers, right? I don't want our archers getting totally obliterated as soon as they come up here. Now we're still going to take serious damage. In fact, ordinarily, this is a very bad situation. I would say we're not going to win this battle, but we'll see how it goes. Meanwhile, I'm going to drag a cavalry unit, the seventh, which is only one dude. I'm going to drag one guy, and all we're going to do with this third cavalry is crank into the enemy here. We're going to crash right into this enemy force. I don't need to kill a bunch of their guys. All I want them to do is do exactly what they're doing right now. I want them to move around. I want some carnage. Meanwhile, my guys have now been able to position to start shooting, right? That bought us some time. We're not here to kill all their troops, even though, I mean, obviously in your game, you're certainly welcome to keep attacking there. All we did there is buy ourselves some time, right? Now their infantry is charging in, right? This is actually a good strategy by them. Their archers are shooting. Eventually their cavalry is going to charge as well. But we now have the high ground here and we're doing pretty good damage at range. I'm also going to put my skirmishers, you've seen me do this before in other videos, on the side with the 8th Corps right behind them. We'll put one uh, cavalry division of three whole dudes right there. You can't do huge tactics when you have 80 troops. But all I'm doing with them is putting them out there as sort of a distraction for the enemy. They're in shield wall. They're holding their same thing here. Second cavalry goes out in shield wall. They, I, I have, they have one job, and that's sort of to hold that ground and prevent the enemy from charging through it. Right? You're going to get some guys that charge through. Oops, I forgot I'm not supposed to be fighting here much. Now the sixth is here. They're being shot at, but a lot of these guys have shields. So they have javelins and shields, which means that they're blocking a lot of arrows, and they're also throwing nasty javelins. Meanwhile, the archers now are up there, and they're raining death, right? Now we're seriously outnumbered. I mean, the enemy must have twice or three times as many archers as we do. In fact, our infantry numbers are pretty close. They have 65 and we have, well, actually, I guess they have twice the infantry too. Basically, we're outnumbered in every single area here. Um, and it may not be a battle we can win, right? Our skirmishers are taking a beating at range. But we're taking advantage of the terrain. We now have some, some distractionary forces, right? This infantry and these cavalry which are going to take a lot of the arrows, a lot of the attention from the enemy, while we have this little archery duel. Again, if I was fighting this battle and it was life or death, there'd be one more thing I'd be doing. Cavalry! This 7th Cavalry, this companion of mine who's in there throwing javelins around, fucking guys up, I'd be dragging him into the battle trying to cause carnage. You see how their archers are running? They do that sometimes based on where cavalry are, right? The, the artificial intelligence or real people in real life. Uh, if they see 1,200 pounds of heavy horse running at them, they're going to tend to do things that uh, are not super logical. They're, they're going to run around. They're going to be distracted. Of course, real life, people are going to be afraid. You get run over by a horse, at a minimum, you're going to be fucking being wheeled around in a basket the rest of your life. So it, it causes chaos within their lines. Meanwhile, across the battlefield, my archers are uninterrupted for the most part and shooting and dealing damage in here, right? So I'm just going to drag this guy through. Oops, I forgot I'm not supposed to kill guys. All I'm doing is sort of causing chaos here. I just want, it's literally one guy. But what he's doing is causing chaos, causing interruptions with the enemy. Infantry, move, soldiers, move. Now I'm moving up my 6th and my 1st infantry, right? Those cavalry are shot to pieces, but look at them holding their shields. They're doing exactly what they were supposed to do. So I'm moving these elite troops up because, frankly, these guys are either out of javelins or the ones that don't have javelins are probably itching to get their hands on the enemy. Right behind there, I'm moving the 8th Corps, right? We're trying to get effectively a flanking movement on the on the enemy. I want to kill this guy so bad with the banner. 
Our archers, meanwhile, are still shooting, right? I'm going to keep them at range. I might need them for a late charge. The infantry is moving up, and this is where you really want to be patient, right? You don't want to just send in one unit prematurely until your units are in position. So I moved here, I'll show you. I moved the first infantry right there. You can see where the green arrows are. And the skirmishers here, I moved right up in the face of the enemy. It's kind of dangerous, right? So what can we do again to help with that? We can take these cavalry, and we can put them right in the face of the enemy. Yeah, they're probably going to get killed. They, they, they may get shot off their horse, whatever it is. But that's going to be somewhat of a distraction so that my forces can move up to where they need to be. Now the enemy's wheeling here. They're kind of changing their formation as I move. And that's, you know, that's good strategy, but it's not really going to matter because once we're in place, these two different divisions are still going to crash into sides of the enemies, right? The, the 6th and the 8th will be coming from there, and this 1st infantry will be coming in from the side. Meanwhile, our archers are still raining death. Cavalry, move! Cavalry, forward! Archers, on my flank! Give the 6th the close-in command. What that does is anybody who's out of ammo charges. The guys who have javelins are still throwing them. But the guys that don't have ammo charge. Same thing with the 8th the eighth Corps. I'm telling them to attack. They'll charge anybody with, with melee. will charge immediately. Anybody with ranged units will charge in a delayed manner. Finally, the 1st Corps. They're not quite as far. I'd prefer they were a little closer. They get told to charge as well. And this is, you know, it's a surround and drown, multi-pronged uh, multi attack on the enemy. It's causing chaos in their ranks. In fact, their archers are sort of panicking into a deeper line here. Meanwhile, they've got infantry right in their face. Right, Anytime you can get melee right in the face of infantry, it's a very bad result for the enemy. Now, my, my archers at this stage are actually out of the battle. They're, they're, anytime you get to about 100 range with your archers, it becomes a detriment to the damage they do. So I'm moving them up. It's a good time to move them because the enemy is both moving back, which means they'll be even further out of range, but also the enemy's not shooting, right? If the enemy's shooting and you charge archers up, you guys are going to get mangled, right? You want to move your archers when the enemy's running. Now, the enemy's running so aggressively, I'm not going to let them just get away. So what I'm actually doing is I'm physically telling that first infantry to charge right through them. I'm physically telling them, I'm dragging the line here. So they're way over there. And I told them to come here. What they will do is all of those infantrymen will now charge in a big long line because I don't want their archers gaining any distance on us. Now as soon as they're close, God, this is a lot easier in slow-mo. As soon as that infantry is close, we're going to charge. F1, F3 command. Right. That infantry is now firmly in the middle of their archers and just cutting cutting their guys down. Right? There's, I mean, this guy's outnumbered. But a lot of the infantry are right in the face of the enemy archers. And, of course, anytime your infantry is right in the face of the enemy archers, you've already sort of won that, that part of the battlefield. That tactic has allowed you to really gain a big advantage. At this stage, my skirmishers as well, I'm also telling them to attack, right? We've got, this is a concentrated attack. We've got our 1st Infantry, 6th Infantry, 8th, which are our elite units, and our cavalry divisions both charging right into the face of the enemy. And even though we're outnumbered, we have a chance to win. In fact, according to that top screen, uh, you can see it, it, it favors us significantly in this stage. You can't use that always as the best gauge of how a battle's going. Uh, but in, in this case, I think given that our infantry is totally uh, overwhelming their archers, I think that's pretty accurate that we have a pretty good chance to win. Now, when I look around the battlefield, I still three, see three or four or five of our infantry being attacked by one archer. All right, we're going to suffer losses in a battle like this where you're outnumbered more than two to one or, or something like two to one. You're never just going to roll through and kill everybody, at least not without really good tactics and a better army composition. Uh, but you have a pretty good chance to win. These archers are now moved up, right? They're shooting. Now, a few of them are out of arrows, right? I see that gal's just holding her glaive. So what I'm actually going to do, it's obviously a lot easier in, in slow-mo, is I'm going to give them the advance command. When I do that, she's out of arrows. She will now move up and join the rest of the crews in melee. Her standing there with her pole arm, I mean, she's attractive, but... She's going to do a lot more damage as if she charges into the fight. 
There's another tactical advantage that's occurring right now, and I didn't really plan it, but it's just kind of working out that way. Their archers are back here, fighting our melee, and they don't have any line of sight on the infantry that's right down here off the edge of the map. What that means is that they're having a hard time shooting our infantry that's down there, while our, our infantry emerge right in the face of the enemy when they do eventually come up the hill. I've given those archers the charge command because I want my full firepower now to be bearing down on this last this last bit of enemy archers. It looks like they have I can't quite tell, but it looks like they have maybe 50, 60 guys. There it is. 50 guys. And I want these troops in the face of the enemy. Now, if they don't do that, remember what I said before, if they won't get up here and charge, you can fucking make them charge. You can say, "Get your bitch asses up here." I'm the Jarl, I know what's best, you guys are fucking acting stupid today, and you see them charging up, then, once they're close, you give them the charge command, right? I want them right in the face, I want them right in the midst of the enemies. Now, I'll caution you doing this, if you send weak archers into combat like this, and you don't micromanage your command attack, they will be fucking dead. Uh, before you even realize what's going on, right? Archers that are just told to move don't necessarily have a shield, don't necessarily have good armor. Uh, they will be fucking dead. So if you're going to use that process that I just used, physically moving up, make sure as soon as they're close, you give them the command to attack. Right Now there's like four or five guys that are free. I got like one noble here who's just dying to be beheaded. Man, that guy's got really good armor. He took a heavy blow. Uh, and the battle is the battle is over. I didn't, actually didn't expect it to be quite that big of a route um, Facing you know that many enemies 250 enemies with our with our hundred. We even killed this fucking guy I guess that was a savage blow. He took at the end uh, But hopefully this is another demonstration for you that are fighting these battles of, of 70 80 90 men how you can be successful using tactics obviously it's not um, you know, it's not not on the grand scale of anything like battles where you have four, five, six hundred people on both sides. Uh, but this will be good practice for you and, and hopefully uh, hopefully this video uh, benefits you when you're trying to trying to pull off some tactics or, or other other things on, on Battle Lord battles, uh, Banner Lord battles. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're interested in more instruction like this. Uh, I'm a ex-military. I'm a student of war. Um, I have an intense database of different battles and tactics to try. And I'll be happy to share with them, uh, share share that with you fellas uh, in the upcoming months to come. All right, thanks again for watching.